if you have one of these and you have a Raspberry Pi that you want to put Trixie on, then I have a solution to your problem with WSJTX that you might not even know you have yet. Let's go take a look at solving this problem. This problem with Raspberry Pi OS Trixie also surfaces with the DigiRig and the Toad's DI and probably a bunch of other things. This Toad's DI here is pretty slick because it is meant for getting older radios that do not sport a built-in sound card onto digital modes. And you can either use this daughter board to access the six pin interface found on Yezu, ICOM, and Kenwood radios, and probably some others. Or you can use these pin headers here and roll your own interface for radios that do not have the six pin. We are here on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, and I'm gonna bring up WSJTX, and I've got the ICOM 705 connected now. If we go into settings and we go into audio, you can see I've got sys default colon card equals codec, and that's not the typical thing. If we drop down the input list, you can see that the typical thing for the ICOM series radios is the Burr Brown from TI, Texas Instruments, USB audio codec. And you can see that there's an input and an output here. And this has something to do with the way that Raspberry Pi OS, which is inherited from Debian, handles sound. And sound on Linux has always been a weird thing. We've got Pulse Audio, we've got Pipewire, we've got also the Advanced Linux Sound Architecture or something along those lines. So if I drop down the output here, I see a ton of interfaces. And I see none of them. It kind of goes off the screen a little bit at the top. And I can't control the bottom because it's off my screen. Let me see what I can do about that. Move this up so the bottom of that box is better. But either way, I think that's the bottom of the list. We don't see a Texas Instruments interface from Burr Brown for the ICOM 705. And if I plug in the Toad's DI or I plug in the DigiRig or presumably any other sound card, you're also going to see this exact same problem where you see the input and the output on the input side, but then you see no output on the output side. And if you see no output on the output side, that means you can't transmit. So how do we figure this out? Which one of these 6,000 cards is actually a usable card? Some of these actually make a little bit of sense. Some of these don't. Like this VC4 HDMI one is one of the HDMI plugs on the side of the Raspberry Pi. And there's also a VC4 HDMI zero. So that's the other HDMI plug. So those audio devices make sense. If you plug it into a TV, you should have audio coming out of the TV speakers. The HDMI card kind of makes sense. Plug HW. I don't know what plug HW is. I mean, I do, but in this sense, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? A USB stream, sys default, front, front, sure, front. Surround sound, 2.1, 4.0, 4.1, 5.0, 5.1, 7.1, etc. So let's get to the bottom of this. I will leave a link in the description down below to the script in question, the script that I created to figure out this problem. Let's zoom in and take a look at this script. I call the script toads audio helper dot sh. Sh is the file extension you give for shell scripts, for bash, for zsh, for csh, for just plain old sh if you're really into old time pain in Linux. Shells have come a long way. I typically use zsh, the new one. And use your favorite editor. If you don't like Joe, I happen to like Joe because you get this fancy color syntax highlighting. Vi is good enough and Nano if you're new to, to everything. But basically what we do is we go through and we look for all of the different sound interfaces that are there and we kind of try and figure out the one that's plugged in. And I wrote this for the Toads DI, which is based on a CM108 chip. So some of the stuff's going to reference CM108. It obviously works with the ICOM 705 because I got it working. So, you know, if you see that, that's the reason why you see that. And then it will spit out a line that says, we found one, and what the one is that we found. And this is all like behind the scenes stuff. If you really want to get into the, the weeds and figure out how the script works and all that jazz, go for it. It's just using a bunch of command line tools and wrapping up all the answers for you. So I'm going to quit out of this. And then you can go through all the trouble to set this executable, but you're only going to use it once. Bash, space, toads. And it's going to run the script, and it's going to tell me that for the ICOM 705, it is sysdefault colon card equals codec. And that's why you saw those in WSJTX. And in audio, you see sysdefault colon card equals codec. And in output, you see sysdefault colon card equals codec. Those are the sound cards that you need to use in order to get the 705 working. So there's my Raspberry Pi, my USB cable, and my 
digi rig is upside down. That's okay. It still works upside down. So we'll just go right back and we will run that same command. And this time I've got the digi rig plugged in. And it says sys default colon card equals device. So in WSJTX, you put those in. So there's the Raspberry Pi, my USB cable, and the Toad's digital interface. There we go. That's so cute. And we can do the same command and it comes back as sys default colon card equals device. And that's because I believe the DigiRig and the Toad's DI both use the CM108 sound card. I will leave a link in the description down below where you can find that script to copy and paste into the terminal of your Raspberry Pi to run the command to bring back WSJTX to full functionality under Raspberry Pi OS Trixie. And I'll also leave a link down there for the DigiRig if you don't have one of those and for the Raspberry Pi as well. And if you made it this far, you must be a Raspberry Pi fan. So I have got plenty of videos on my channel about Raspberry Pi. Take a look right over here and I'll see you over there. Thanks for being awesome.